My name is John Bostock, I'm 24 years old and I'm a professional football player. I play for Old Heavily Leuven in Belgium and I'm from London. Everything that seemed like a young player would want, I had. I can't put my confidence in how I'm doing because I'm not always going to do well. My confidence needs to be in something that doesn't change. In my life, um, football was always number one from a real, real young age. Um, my mum tells me stories of when I was even two or three, I'd be in the park and I would take other, other kids' footballs. You know, so I think sometimes you, you choose your passion, but other times your passion chooses you. When I was two months old, my, my father left my, my family, so I had a stepfather, so I always had a, a male figure in my life, an example from when I was five. My dad took me to all of the games, so I started my career when I was four or five years old. The first club I joined was Crystal Palace Football Club. So I was there from the age of six or seven uh, until I was 16. When I was 15 years old, I became the youngest player in the club's history. Um, for me, this was a great achievement um, and probably one of the highlights in my career because that's the club I support. At that time in my career, uh, I could have chose to sign for any club in Europe. Clubs like Barcelona and Real Madrid offered me contracts and Arsenal and Man United. But my family and I, we decided to choose Tottenham. Um, it was in London and it, would, it was a great opportunity for me to play and to progress. At Tottenham, the year after, I, I became the youngest player in Tottenham's history. At 16 years old, I broke the record. So I felt so much pressure from my family, from my, from my, from my father, just to, just to perform well, to play well. So I remember sometimes, uh, I had a game on Saturday and if I played bad, my father, he wouldn't talk to me for four or five days. Um, and then the next Thursday he'd be like, okay, come on, let's go again. And that was my father's way of trying to show love to me, to try and push me, to try and you know, make me become a better player. But for me, this, helped, this, this made me feel like if I'm not playing well, if I'm not doing good, then I'm a failure. You know, I, I put all, all of my identity and my value in how I played. In my house, growing up, God was never spoke about, never. Um, my parents are atheists. All of this talk was just crazy to me. But I always knew there was something. I always knew that this life is just so detailed, so complicated, so designed. Sometimes I just lie on my bed when I was 12 or 13 and just think, why am I here? I had, I had big questions. How did this all start? Who made the world? Is it evolution? Is it the Big Bang? But I knew in my heart that there was something bigger than me, but I didn't know what it was. My, my second older sister, Tara, on the outside, she, looked, she seemed like a great girl and she, she, she is an amazing person. But I guess for women, when they don't have that father figure in their life, they look for love in different places. And my sister was no different, so she had different relationships with guys. She, had, she went to parties and maybe drunk too much sometimes. And then one day, when I was 15 years old, I just saw a different person in her. And I asked her, I said, Tara, what's happened to you? And she told me, she said, John, I'm a Christian now. I'm living for Jesus. And I, I laughed, I went, what, do you, what do you mean, Jesus? She said, I'm going to church now. And Jesus has saved my life. And, and I remember when she said that to me, I, I didn't understand what it meant but I knew something had happened, something had changed. So that interested me. I wanted to know, I wanted to know uh, what impacted her life. So she invited me to church. She said, John, uh, we go every Sunday and I, and I want you to join me. But I didn't want to go to church, honestly. That's the last place I wanted to go on a Sunday. But that week in the, in the newspaper, I read a story about Kaka and how he is living for God and uh, how being a, a, a Christian has really helped him in his life. On that Sunday, I really enjoyed the service. The worship was, was great. I love music, so that was attractive for me. But towards the end of the service, the pastor, my pastor, now, he shared the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. The bad news is that we've all sinned. Um, I didn't know it was sin in my life, but I knew my life. I knew the things I'd done. No one knows what goes on inside of my mind. No one had to convince me that I was a sinner. I like to take penalties and when you miss them, you miss the mark and the whole stadium goes crazy. Well, spiritually, God has his standard and every single person misses that standard. 
And I was no different, you know. My relationship with girls, uh, things I watched, pornography, uh, lies, stealing, even just my thoughts. I'm very selfish, putting myself always first in my life. And Jesus said, you know, if a man looks at a woman and he wants to have sex with her, he's already done it in his heart. So God's standards is not just what you do, it's what you think. We are all sinners and there's only one way to be forgiven and to be made right with God and that's through Jesus Christ. And he shared about what Jesus done on the cross. All of my sin, all of the bad things I've ever done, he took the punishment for me. I just started crying, I was in tears. And the pastor said, if God is touching your heart right now, come to the front, I wanna pray with you. And there was a voice in my head that said, John, don't go forward, you don't need this. But I stood up, I walked to the front, and the pastor said, stand here. And I fell to my knees, I was completely humbled. Everything that seemed like a young player would want, I had. I had a girlfriend at the time, life was good. I was in the newspaper and going to school. Everything was, life at that time seemed so good. But when I heard the gospel, nothing else really mattered to me because if this was true, if this story was true in the Bible, I need it, you know? And so I gave my life to Jesus that day. I prayed very simply, Lord, forgive me for my sin. I give my life to you. And from this day forward, I want to live for you. Uh, and that was the start of my journey as a Christian. I have a relationship with Jesus now, and that's changed my whole life. It's been an amazing journey, and uh, God has been with me every single step. So at the time at Crystal Palace, I started sharing my faith with people. People could see I was different. You know, they wanted to ask me to come out to go to, to clubs, and they wanted me to meet different girls and stuff. But at the time, I, something had changed inside of me, and I no longer really wanted to do these things. I was praying, I was reading the Bible, I was going to church, I was really trying to put God first. I've got a contract with Tottenham, I'm sponsored by Nike, and I've got God in my corner. Uh, I felt invincible, you know? So it was at this time when everything changed, everything changed. Um, I was in the first team, then they put me back with the under 18s, and for me, this was a real big challenge because I felt like I had already finished that level, but God had not finished with my character. So he allowed me to go through a, a real, real tough, tough period at Tottenham. I was training hard, eating well, sleeping well. Um, I don't drink, I've never drunk alcohol, I've never been going to parties and clubs, so I was really trying to be excellent. All this expectation was on me and I liked it because all the eyes were on me, it was all about me, you know? So after a while, I was back in the youth team and my confidence just went completely down my football, my identity, the thing that made me John Bostock. It was like it wasn't working anymore. I couldn't play. I, I used to play and give everything and play bad. And the manager would change me and I, I would be like, what's happening? God, I'm putting you first. Uh, why, why are things so, so difficult? I would come off the pitch and I would cry. I'd be in tears because I, I wanted to be a success so badly. So Tottenham was a really hard period for me. Sometimes as Christians, you think, yeah, when I'm a Christian, God's gonna bless me. Life's gonna be easy. Wow, I experienced something completely different. Um, God really humbled me and he taught me a lesson. It's not about you really, it's about me. I've cried so many times over football. Football is like this, your emotions go up one minute, down another minute. The media will say you're fantastic, if you have a bad game, they'll, they'll, they'll kill you. So I realized that I can't put my confidence in how I'm doing because I'm not always gonna do well. My confidence needs to be in something that doesn't change. So God had to teach me that. I wasn't depressed, but I thought about, about giving up football. I thought, you know what, this is so difficult. Everyone's just completely said, John's finished. Like what's happened to this, this, this wonder kid who everyone said is gonna be the next best thing? Um, and I was here questioning my ability. Am I even a good player anymore? I've always uh, believed that your character is far more important than your profession. And God really, really taught me that. I left England, I left Tottenham. I had been on loan to different clubs, I think six or seven clubs in England, London, Toronto. And I moved to Belgium, uh, to Royal Antwerp. And this is when I actually said, you know what God, I just want to enjoy you, put you first and enjoy the game again. I don't want to have these pressures on my shoulders where I'm trying to be the best and trying to hold on to something you don't want me to hold on to. I let go. And I completely just trusted God. I didn't try and hold on to, oh, but I, I want to be the wonder kid. I want to prove to everyone that I was 
this player, I said, God, I put you first completely and I let go. And since I came to Belgium, my career has gone like this again. Uh, I enjoy the game, my confidence has gone up. Um, but even if my career was terrible, as long as I have a relationship with Jesus Christ and I'm putting him first, he's taught me that, John, football can't satisfy you. Money can't satisfy you. Women can't satisfy you. Even if you win Ballon d'Or, this won't make you happy. It's a great achievement, but inside we have something that can only be satisfied by Jesus Christ. And if someone told me when I was younger, you'd be sitting here telling people about Jesus, I would probably laugh. But because it's become such a reality in my life, uh, this is who I am.